Hi, welcome to episode 345 of The Corner of Knit and Tea. My name is Laura. I'm also known as Fluffy Kira on Instagram and Twitter. I blog over at the knit corner of knitandtea.com, and that's where this episode and every episode show notes will be. I have an Etsy shop where I sell my knitting patterns and hand spun yarns. Hi, how are you? It is Monday, September 13th. I hope you are doing well. Um, sadly, it is not fall here, even though I am getting into the spirit. I have been uh, writing fall newsletters and talking about fall products all day with my clients. Um, and I am wearing my newly finished easy like Sunday morning sweater, um, which I confess is a bit warm for today. Um, and I am still figuring out how to wear it. It is a big comfy v-neck pullover with lots of positive ease. Um, and I confess I feel a little flash dance today with off the shoulder. I am wearing a camisole underneath and then I've got this one. Um, I haven't 100% decided what I'm going to do. I'm going to play with wearing it a little bit like this and see how it feels. Um, and then it is not outside the possibility that I might uh, rivet back a little bit and uh, do a few less decreases on the um, v-neck or possibly rip it back and knit a smaller size. So I haven't decided yet. I knit the size medium, which comes with four to six inches of positive ease. I think I have a little bit more than that. Um, maybe my gauge got a little bit off, so we're just gonna have to see. It is a super easy sweater. It came together in about two and a half weeks. Um, and it is lovely to wear and I really I feel I really do feel like I'm hearkening back to um, the 80s and 90s because I feel like I could wear it with um, a camisole and stretch pants as long as it covers my behind and um, I could be a uh, full-on cozy weather for the fall um, since I don't plan on leaving the house <laughs> so that's what is going on here let's um, well, let me think about what else. There's been lots and lots, lots of crafting. I have some finishes. I have some new starts, which I'm very excited for. Um, and I mean, the whole world is let's cast on all the things. I have so many creative ideas and inspiration, and I've been working through yarns that I have in my stash that I don't have a project for and finding projects for them. And who knows when I'll actually get to knit them. Um, but I've just felt really creative and productive, um, and it has been a good week. So, um, today I am drinking coffee and, uh, Wes always, my husband always teases me that I'm going to lose subscribers if I drink coffee on the podcast, but I just felt like it. I just, the weather is not cozy. It is still in the eighties outside, but indoors I am dreaming of autumn and I wanted a cup of coffee and my sweater and to just sit and ponder all my fall makes. So I am drinking um, the roastery coffee. The roastery is local to Kansas City um, and I am drinking it's I, it's a vanilla caramel coffee. It's really really good um, and I added a little milk and sugar as I usually do and technically I brewed up a pot so I will have more for later this week. I probably shouldn't because it's already four o'clock in the afternoon but I'm gonna have one cup um, and just in, enjoy the you know what out of it. So that is what I am drinking today in my mug. And I'm looking forward to going back to hot tea season. I do love iced tea, um, but I really do love settling down with a warm cup of tea. So let's talk about the finishes this week. I have two and I am thrilled. So the first that I have is my Dovetail Pullover by Quinn Reverendo, which was a knit um, that involved Allegria from Manos del Uruguay. It was designed for Allegria, for, um, from Manos del Uruguay. I used their bocados, which are their small mini skeins for the color work in the yoke. It was designed to be fully knit in Allegria, sorry, it's Allegria Grande. Um, but I actually knit it in a yarn that I had from a small um, spinning mill in uh, Whidbey Island in Washington State, and that is um, Abundant Earth Fibers. It was a small batch called the Natural Speckle Pepper. It was 90% U.S. Merino, 10% Washington Tar Heat. It was spun up as a DK, but I find that when it washes and wears, it works up more like a worsted or an Aran. So I had a little, um, I had some issues with gauge, and I went ahead and just modified the sweater for my liking. I do have one more full skein, but I managed to finish with this much to spare, so that was kind of a yarn chicken win that I didn't have to open the final skein. I don't know what I'll do with that, but this is a really, really lovely base. This is the second project I've made out of it, um, and I just, I'm really going to enjoy this. 
this is a yoked sweater and then I do have two full sleeves which is what I did this past week. Um, I did do the first sleeve um, fairly quickly and um, finished the motif and was ready to go um, and I was concerned that I would not have enough pink to finish the second sleeve. Well it turns out I almost did um, and all my ends are woven in I just need to wash and block. I finished uh, the second sleeve on I think Friday night and I was afraid that I wouldn't have enough time to no I finished it on Saturday and I was afraid that I wouldn't have enough time to wash and block and have it dry to show you um the second sleeve I had enough for almost the full repeat if you see I've got three um stitches below and only two up top that's right I ran out one row from the end and I just called it a win and I figured when I'm wearing it nobody's really going to notice if the cuffs are off you can actually from this distance you can barely notice it anyway um only if you get up close so I was super super excited um and I finished that and then I'm just going to block that and I'll take um I'll take a photo shoot maybe in a couple weeks when the leaves start to change because we are not there yet um, but I am really excited. This is going to be a warm, cozy sweater for the fall. Again, that is a dovetail, the dovetail sweater by Quinn Reverendo. Um, it was written to be used with Allegria Grande from Manos del Uruguay. It was a wonderful project. Um, my mods are on my project page, but I didn't stick to any particular sizing in the pattern because of my issues with gauge. Um, but the pattern is very well written um, and it is sized nicely. Um, so you should be able to find that as a project if you think you'd like to do that. So that is the first one that's done this week. The second one that's done is my sample for Zen Yarn Garden. And that was a um, not complicated, but kind of intricate knit. Uh, that is the Positive Vibrations Shawl by Marinja Knits. Um, and it is a three color shawl with all kinds of fun shapes uh, based on short row shaping. So I started up at the top with Old Navy. The second color that I used is Scallions. It is a bright, almost neon green. And then the third color is Tangerine, and that is a bright, almost neon orange. Again, all my, um, you, uh, all my ends are woven in, and actually now that this is blocked, I need to slip the, snip them and get them ready to go to the photographer. So you start out with a, an asymmetrical triangle, a small blue section, and then you do some stripes. And um, that's about the last of the mindless knitting. There is, there are a few other stripes in the pattern, but then you start to go into short row shaping and she just has you keep growing with short row shaping. There are a few, um, few plain garter stitch stripes as you go through, but not a lot. Um, and you're just creating larger and larger uh, short row shaping sections. Um, the body of the shawl ends with this last section of blue here and then you go into the edging and the edging technically calls for more than one section of blue um, but I ran out basically at the end of the body and only had enough to do one final section so the final section of the shawl is generally designed to be done in two colors I also ended a few rows from the end um, not more than four or five but I was concerned about running out of yarn as it turns out I actually could have gone further um, but I wanted to make sure that I got the I-cord bind off in and I was afraid that if I waited too long I might not have enough for that. Um, I had about I think about 15 grams left over so I probably could have knit a couple more rows with the green and a couple more rows with the orange and just alternated those out to the end um, but I think it's fine because it is more than my wingspan. So this is the Positive Vibrations Shawl by Marinja Knits. It will be a kit coming from Zen Yarn Garden. I am sending it out for photography this week. Um, so I would look for it in the next month or so. This is going to be one of their fall shawl kits. Um, they will likely also be doing a knit along for it that I will be involved in. Whew, that means I get to knit it again. <laughs> <laughs> but um, again, it is um, a fairly intricate knit in that you are doing lots of short row shaping so you are constantly um, following the rows. All the rows are written out. Um, it is a bit of a daunting, uh, I shouldn't say it, but 17 page pattern. Um, that includes schematics. Um, her pattern writing is very precise and she also has tons of great pictures to show you exactly what shape you are creating with exactly each section. So um, the pattern really does lead you through it. I wouldn't say that this is a very beginner pattern, but I also wouldn't say that it's more than an intermediate pattern because if you know how to make short row shapes and you can count or use stitch markers to count your stitches, you can totally do this. Um, it just 
it it is a concentration knit it's not a in front of the television knit because you do have to keep a pretty close eye on the pattern so i am happy to have that off the needles i think that took me about a month to knit um and like i said that one's going off for photographs so that means that i was allowed to cast on a few new things and when i say allowed that's totally the arbitrary knitting rules um that i make for myself i had too many projects on the go and things that i needed to finish and i wanted to finish some whips before i started casting on new things for the fall so um like i said totally arbitrary rules for myself so the first thing that I cast on, because there's nothing like a sock for easy knitting, is I cast on some socks for my nephew. This is the first sock and it's almost done, um, but this is a, just a plain vanilla sock with a heel flap and gusset and I am knitting this out of Nomadic Yarns. I believe it has her trusty sock base and it is in the colorway Sharknado. Uh, if you have been with me for a little while, you will recognize it. Yes, it is the leftover yarn from Miles' birthday sweater, his sock arm sweater. Um, and I had enough left to get a pair of socks out of it easily, so I thought he might dig matching socks to his sweater. Um, he's five, so uh, or he will be five, so I think that kind of thing is probably still cool. I mean, even I match socks to my sweaters sometimes, but, you know. <laughs> then, then then again let it be known that I am not the picture of cool so um what do I know but <laughs> I hope that he'll find them um fun and um my plan is hopefully to finish um this first sock maybe even tonight and get the second sock on and off the needles by the time I talk to you next week I still have a lot of socks I would like to knit for the kids this fall I'd like to get them a couple pairs each uh and these are to go in their Christmas packages so um but I might have to deliver them at Thanksgiving. It just sort of depends. So um, I am on a slightly um, a slightly shortened time frame. However, today is only the 13th, so if I finish this pair of socks this week, I should have time to do one more pair of socks this month, which hopefully will keep me on track. So that is number one, um, just vanilla socks in the Sharknado colorway. And of course the striping yarn is doing all the fun work for me. So that is number one. Number two is I decided to cast on for a shawl for myself. Um, it's not that I don't knit for myself, um, but I have tons and tons of yarn in my stash and I rarely use it because I'm working on a lot of samples and other things. And so I decided I wanted to knit something for myself. Um, the shawl that I picked is the Stay Soft Shawl by Vera Valamaki, and it is a couple years old. It's, it's not new. It is a three color garter stitch shawl. Um, and I love, love, love garter stitch. Um, there is nothing like garter stitch for a calming, soothing knit when I just want to get in rhythm and not have to pay attention and just um, enjoy my knitting. And so I, uh, I was, had been looking for three color shawl options because for my birthday this year, I went to the local yarn store and I picked out three skeins of yarn. Um, and the skeins are from a uh, less traveled yarn who I recently saw a, um, in the last couple months, she did a Christy Glass Knits and uh, she dyes tons and tons and tons of beautiful yarn. I believe she's out of Arizona. Yeah, she's out of Phoenix. Um, and her website is travelingyarn.com, but it is less traveled yarn. Um, and she named her studio that because she loves to travel and she loves yarn. Um, and the bases, the base that I am using is the um, Dreamliner base. It's 70% BFL, 20% silk, and 10% cashmere. And when I went into the yarn shop, they had all the colors they had from her on the wall. And these three were near each other on the wall, and I just really, really loved them. So the first is this one, and this is in the colorway um, Saguaro, which is for cactus. So it's a really nice kind of pale green. This um, gray one is, let me see what it is. Uh, it is uh, Vanta, and it is a very dark charcoal gray. And then the final skein I haven't wound yet, and it is uh, Transmutation, and um, it is this green with lots of rust color. And so the um, Stay Soft shawl is a bunch of triangles. So first you're knitting an asymmetrical triangle and you start in the first color and you knit a bunch of garter stitch as I have done. I am actually done with this first section and ready to start the second section. So this is the first section. 
Um, not very exciting, but but it is about uh, a little over 100 rows of knitting. So I did do a little bit on this this weekend, and you can see it is just a really, really nice semi-solid, kind of a mottled cactus green. And then I am going to stripe it with the Vanta. Um, and so there will be a section of garter stripes, and then there will be a section done at the bottom of the charcoal. Um, and I think there is a little bit of a pattern to it if I went and I really just skimmed the pattern. I did not read the whole thing through. Um, so I think there might be a slightly different pattern to this section on the bottom, but I am not sure. I'll probably be able to tell you next week. So you you basically go ahead and construct your um, asymmetrical triangular shawl. And then on this side, so on the border, there will be um, a very, it's not an isosceles because it, it will be an acute triangle. All my, all my uh, geometry coming to pass. Um, it will be an acute triangle. It is a section down this side. Um, and so I decided that I wanted to use this gorgeous color as the accent down the side because I think it will go beautifully with both of them. Um, and I just decided that um, it would provide the most contrast, I think. Um, and this, honestly, of the three, this is my total favorite. This is the one that I picked up first. Um, it is green and a little bit of turquoise and almost some um, rust color in there. Um, it looks like oxidizing copper or something to me, and I just absolutely love it. So that will be the third and final skein that I will sort of cherish as I'm going through this. Um, and I have uh, extra yardage, so I don't know what I will make with the leftovers or whether I will lengthen the shawl or what precisely I will do. Um, but that is the second thing that I cast on this week. The third thing, and the bag is over there, so I guess I won't be able to talk about it yet, is um, my next sample for Zen Yarn Garden. I am going to be knitting the Excuse Me sweater by Stephen West. I think I talked about this last week, and I've received yarn. I'm going to be knitting it in their Nightshade Worsted, which is, um, I've used their Nightshade in fingering. I haven't used it in worsted yet, uh, but the Nightshade yarn is the one that has a single ply of black, and then the other plies take the dye. So I am knitting it in kind of a speckled, um, it's cream, and then it's got a bunch of other colors speckled, and that will be the foreground color, and then I'm using black as the background color. So I need to swatch for that so that I can cast on, um, and that's brioche and in the round, and it's going to be super fun. I'm very excited about it. That's actually a pattern that I had wanted to knit, but I don't know 100% that it would, um, that I would wear it. I, I don't know if it's my aesthetic, but there are lots of fun patterns out there that I'm dying to knit that even if I don't want to wear them personally for myself, they're a fun knit. So I'm excited to be able to do that as a sample knit. And then the final thing this week, and that brings me back up to four projects again, is I have a chicken. And look at this yarn. I don't know that it reminds me so much of a chicken, but that burgundy or, or that dark red and pink and gray, those colors together are just absolutely gorgeous. This is totally my wheelhouse, and I'm very excited to knit this up into... Um, to become a chicken this week. And if you haven't joined me before, I work for a company called The City Girl Farm as an independent contractor, and I help them create, they are the home of the original chicken footstool. They are chickens that are created out of all kinds of materials. The bodies are wood and metal and brass, um, and then the outsides are all decorated in either felted or knit or crocheted uh, wool. So if you want to check that out, um, that's the citygirlfarm.com, um, and that is what I'm talking about when I'm talking about chickens. So a sip of coffee, and then we'll go into spinning, and then we will be done. So a couple things for this week. One is I have a finished spin to show you. My finished spin was actually from... Um, Hello Yarn, I spun it up a couple weeks ago, and I, or I, I think I had the bobbins finished for the last podcast, but the yarn wasn't entirely finished. It actually still is not finished because I haven't given it a bath, but this is Show Me Your Garden, which was a 85% um, Polworth, 15% silk, and it was purples and yellows and blues, and it is just absolutely gorgeous. Um, I really, really love this skein. My guess is it's going to be about 325 yards when I get it done from the bath. Um, it's nice and soft and square squishy and it's got a little bit of shine from that silk. So that will be up in my shop this week if um, you are interested. I realized that I also forgot a bobbin. I am a bad podcaster because I do have a spin in progress. I showed the fiber to you last week 
It is, I called it Berry Cobbler because it came without a name. Um, it is fiber from Kumasi Fiber Arts, um, and that is a shop on Etsy. The fiber is a BFL, and it is rich berry tones and browns. Um, it is just gorgeous for the fall, and it totally reminded me of like a baked fall or, or summer cobbler with the um, with dark, dark berries, blueberries or raspberries, and then um, kind of a crumbled top on it. Anyway, I am super excited to finish that one. I have a little bit more to go on the second bobbin, and then I will ply it. So hopefully I'll have that done and ready to show you next week. Which brings me to my spin this week. Um, at the beginning of the week, I actually went ahead and bought some fiber, and I wanted to share a little bit um, of what I bought with you. So I, for many of you, um, mostly those who are spinners, um, you will have heard about Yarn School, particularly if you're here in the US. Yarn School is a fabulous retreat that happens in the middle of Kansas. It is held in Harveyville, Kansas, and it is hosted by Nicole Lore, who um, she and her husband bought the old Harveyville High School and Elementary School, and they live there and turned it into kind of a fiber arts collective. And um, before the pandemic, twice a year, they held yarn school, um, which was also taught by Adrian from Hello Yarn. And it is a weekend long retreat where you would go out to Harveyville. Um, they've turned a lot of the classrooms into bedrooms. Um, and then you do things like dye fiber in what used to be the chemistry lab. You can learn how to spin or improve your technique in the gym. We would all sit around in the gym and spin. You can use the drum carters to create gorgeous bats. Um, usually uh, we go see the alpacas at a neighboring farm. Uh, sometimes people bring goats. We've had indigo dyeing vats in the past. It is just a weekend completely devoted to a love of all things yarn and fiber. Um, and unfortunately for the last two years, um, they have been unable to hold yarn school because of the coronavirus. They had been hoping to hold it again this fall, but with the Delta variant, variant they ended up having to cancel. And these events that they hold throughout the year, um, Yarn School happens twice a year. They also have wonderful other options like felt school, dye school, weaving school, mitten school, um, and they are all weekend long retreats focused around um, fiber and, and community. Um, and then they also host some other retreats throughout the year. However, they have not been able to host retreats in almost two years now, um, and that is kind of hard on them financially. So what I wanted to say is that they do have an Etsy shop. It is called Art Club on Etsy, um, and I will put the link in the show notes. And if you are a spinner um, or a weaver who is interested in either equipment or fiber, um, or they also have these really cute felting kits, I would recommend that you go check it out. It is just, Nicole is a wonderful person and she has beautiful offerings. So I wanted to show you the things that I got and one of them is actually going to be my spin for the week. So, um, and I am not affiliated with her in any way. I just love it. And it is, to me, it is a semi-local resource. She's about two hours from me. Um, and I have gone to yarn school and love it. And I just, I want so badly to see all of my fiber friends make it through this pandemic um, and continue to survive and thrive again. Um, so that's why I'm sharing this with you today. So the first thing that I picked up is one of her color bombs. And this is a pound of fiber and you can get them in a variety of colors. Um, you can needle felt with these, you can spin with these, you can card these into bats, and I think what I'm probably going to do is try and beg a friend of mine to let me use, or a local friend of mine to let me use her drum carter so I can turn this into bats. But this is the blues, there's also purples, greens, reds, oranges, um, and it's got a ton of different fibers. It looks like there are some locks in here, there's a little bit of Stellina in here, um, and then there's a bunch of different kinds of roving. Um, and it is, like I said, one pound, and um, I hope to break this up into um, a bunch of bats and spin it for I don't know what yet, um, but it looked good. The second thing that I ordered from her, and this is the one that I'm going to spin this week, is she has a whole bunch of merino color samplers. I believe that these are Ashford merino top, um, and she puts, what I love about it is that she puts, uh, you can buy, um, sorry, talking too fast. 
<laughs> you can buy um, an amount of a single fiber from her. She has them all up, all the different colors from Ashford. Um, and so you can buy four ounces if what you are looking for is a braid. But the other thing that she does is she puts them into color sampler packs so that you can get a little bit of each. So this is, I believe, about 10 ounces. Two, three, four, five, six. It's not, it's 10, it's 10 colors and it's over half a pound. So it's probably not quite an ounce per. And this is in yellows, greens, and pinks. And it's just, it's called Spring Blossom. Um, and I just, and actually these are from World of Wool. Um, and it says all the colors that are in there. And um, I want to thin this maybe as a two ply gradient and turn it into a shawl. So um, this is what I will be spinning up and coming this week. Um, and if you are looking for some fiber, I urge you to check out her shop. The other thing that she included, which was so lovely, and I did not order, is she included these little itty bitty um, bats. And these look like this, a lot of the same fiber, um, but they've also got some, a couple of them have Stellina carded into them um, and they're all color coordinating and I feel like maybe I will use them all together in a project and these have to be almost an ounce a piece um, and she did, this is Merino Swirly Whirly, this is called Under the Sea, this one is called Kissed a Frog and this one is called, um, this is also a Merino Swirly Whirly. So these are just some fun extras that she popped in there um, and I would just recommend that you check out her shop. So I hope that you have had a wonderful week. Thank you for spending about a half an hour with me while I prattle on about all of my different projects and um, channel my inner sort of flash dance 80s, 90s grunge, you know, in my, in my new sweater, which is fabulous. Um, I hope that you have had a, I hope that you're off to a great start this week, that you are happy, that you are healthy, um, that you are finding something fun to craft on. I hope you're enjoying the seasonal change. Um, I know some of you will be uh, entering a different season than we are, but I hope uh, either way you're enjoying the change of the seasons and getting some crafting inspiration from it. Um, I will say to you, as I always do, uh, happy knitting, happy spinning, Happy sipping, and I'll see you next time. Bye.